Good morning. Welcome to a morning outlook. This is Kim speaking on Friday, the 28th of July. So what happened yesterday then? Uh, it reversed the previous day, basically, mostly. Uh, all the excitement, uh, weak dollar. Uh, well, we did, we did see some follow through. I'm just looking at dailies on the euro dollar here. And uh, we'd almost pitched into the uh, weekly 200 actually let me just check something for you here on, the, on my composite price levels and no we only just nearly did it on there as well I was just checking a different feed of data there to see if it caught there no it didn't so that's the answer on that one but got pretty close to it is it going to go up there still possible um, we've seen quite a sell-off uh, uh, yesterday as I said it's come back retesting this uh, four hourly 34 Seems to like this 4 hour 34 at the moment. It's, uh, well, as I say, it's three tests on it. It's had a bounce off it yesterday. Just uh, come back into the daily pivot at the moment. And for me, I'm looking at this, and the, the obvious uh, thing I'm sort of seeing is potentially bear flag here, uh, which uh, I'm sure I'm not alone on this. And looking across the lows here, and for me, if it starts breaking down below this 21, well, I'd be on the sell side looking at yesterday's lows, and maybe even if it uh, gets a decent run down to that daily um, daily uh, S1 there, maybe the uh, 60 minute 200. Now, um, that may be a bit wishful thinking, thinking in terms of the overall move there, but uh, we'll see how it runs. It's the upside if it breaks back above the daily pivot, which is always a possibility, it may just run into the Audi 34, may just fall us out there from where it's sitting at the moment. So it's a bit of patience this morning if it starts breaking above. Well, as I said, there's still is that weekly um, 200 above us, and we could start making our way back up to that. And if it starts pushing up with any strength, I'd be looking towards the R1. Uh, I think yesterday's highs might be a, a, a tall order today. Uh, but we'll see. We have got the US GDP figure coming out at 1.30 um, this afternoon. Right, that's the euro, the pound. Start the bigger picture here. Um, well, um, sort of a secondary divergent sort of price action into this uh, move here on the dailies, arguably. Um, I do say arguably because... Uh, it's a bit iffy. Um, again, we've got this sort of pattern, and again, I could be drawing trend lines. So I, oh, this is a four alley. I think I'll do it on the alley here. Um, so I could be drawing the trend line. There's probably two, at least two trend lines I could be uh, drawing on here. Let's just uh, get my pen, and probably the easiest and the, and the more likely is somewhere in that region there. So uh, I'd like to see it hit the daily pivot before I sold it. But uh, it's, it's come within a, a whisk of, and that may just uh, need a wider stop to allow for that to be hit. But uh, as I say, maybe a bit of patience. The, the, the pounders uh, for many morning uh, slipped around for quite a while, um, not done very much, uh, and then gone in the original direction I expected. Yesterday it sold off, it did pip up first, but uh, eventually did the sell off back to the pivot here. Well, I'd like to see that pivot hit ideally, so a bit of patience may be needed this morning. Uh, if that's hit and it breaks, starts breaking through, watch out for the 34. Clear it, clearing of the 34 really clears it for further upside in my book at the moment, though. It's, uh, it's looking at a bearish picture uh, for intraday, which could bring us back to yesterday's lows. Maybe the daily S1 at 200 also looks. Uh, uh, like a possible target, that probably sums it up pretty well. The fact that we've got a 200 moving average that's almost flat lining uh, just shows you how little the market's relatively moved over well the last 60 periods really. <laughs> um, on the hourly the last 60 hours, it's been uh, arguably quite flat outside of this uh, news news affected by the news and the, the sell off back to where it was, but uh, not really going too far. Dolly yen. Well, dolly yen. I must admit, I was wondering yesterday whether we'd see more of a correction to the upside and a break back above the volatility, uh, volatility the moving average that's sitting there. I did have it up. I imagined it might have pushed up, but at the moment, it's looking like it may strengthen. Uh, four alley. It's a bit of a head and shoulders going on in that four alley pattern uh, now. Why am I interested in that? Well, so often they do play out a little bit. 
see how it runs. It starts breaking back above that uh, right hand shoulder, which is a bit bitty actually. Um, it actually looks a clear on here. Oh no, there's the right shoulder. I'm looking at it in a bigger time frame. There we go. So it almost looks like it's got a head and shoulders in the right hand shoulder here. Um, if it starts breaking up, well, um, may have to ignore that but at the moment it has got a daily pivot above us untouched which may cause a draw although the price action was around it around midnight um, if it can draw up and start by pulling up well uh, let's say daily pivot 50 ma targets to the upside there to the downside we got yesterday's lows pretty close already uh, and that may provide some support it's been as seen here it's been uh, around there there's been certainly um uh, demand around that sort of area now uh, a break of that would give that bigger let's say the bigger head and shoulder sort of move the bigger correction uh, more opportunity to be hit okay Aussie dollar so yesterday pitched up ran through the uh, weekly 200 there um, it was uh, then heading towards the monthly 50. It was uh, actually it did run into the monthly 50, or at least air kissed the monthly 50 yesterday. Um, so maybe you get a bit more of a correction from that. It's done just about everything I really wanted it to do here uh, this week in terms of hit the weekly pivot. It's uh, um, sitting there at the moment in a, in a relatively tight range, ignoring the news effect. It's still sort of sitting where it was in the earlier part of the week, not very clear. Um, it has got a daily pivot still above, which it uh, may head up to. Break of the lows here, well, we could be on for the S1, may, maybe even uh, um, a test back down towards that uh, weekly pivot sort of zone. And finally, Canadian dollar, if I can get it to come up here, there we go. So Canadian dollar was just looking at this yesterday, put a regression channel on here in terms of uh, its potential. Oh, it looks pretty much like a bullish engulf in there, which could suggest a little bit more upside on that Canadian dollar. It, uh, it really did reverse round in the uh, later session, particularly um, 12 o'clock onwards. It sort of pushed up and it's look like it at the moment. It looks like it's heading up for, as I say, a, maybe a bigger correction. Um, it certainly broke through some trends and well at the moment it's sitting there in a bitty old state of uh, play we have got the daily pivot still underneath so any sort of correction back to this um, uh, would be a, certainly a possibility a good possibility um, break to the upside I mean it's in a sort of a, almost a wedge type pattern at the moment if you draw which draw the lines on it break upwards well yesterday's highs uh, or first touch that weekly pivot that still sits up there so um, preference would be the daily pivot first um, to be fair just have a quick look at what oil is up to yeah so oil's still pushing up that should help the Canadian dollar to the downside it's uh, sitting around about $49 it's uh, done pretty well held on to uh, the previous uh, um, of Wednesday's gains there and uh, holding on to that sort of 49 sort of area so uh, said in the pretty earlier part of the week $50 could be still on right okay uh, that as I say that should help the Canadian dollar maybe uh, pull back uh, towards that daily pivot today at the moment right uh, news wise today I did mention um, you know, I'm sitting and talking about the Canadian dollar so I'll talk, there is a GDP data coming out 130 now that comes out monthly and really doesn't rock the uh, uh, Canadian dollar too much but you never know um, but uh, at the same time you've got the US um, advanced GDP so this is the first one this is important most important of all the GDPs is the first reading each quarter um, it, so uh, we'll be looking for that at 130 as well. So we could still see quite a bit of volatility in the Canadian dollar and any other dollar backed uh, uh, pairing. Um, we got an FOMC speaker later in the day as well at 620. I won't be around trading that, but uh, there could be some volatility there. Just looking at um, the German uh, uh, data, inflation data comes out uh, this morning. Uh, the six states report through this morning uh, should be all done by about midday. So 
um, that's uh, that's due out. That can give a little kickers to the euro here and there, but uh, not necessarily major kickers. Right, that's it for me. Have a great day. Bye for now.